you saw a bright flash in the sky, or you heard a bunch of other people did, and you wanna know, is it worth your time to go chase after it? This video is for you. Hello, Earthlings. Fireball Steve back here with another installment of our How to Find Meteorites Crash Course, where I am teaching you everything you need to know on how to find meteorites. These rocks from space can be valuable treasures to find. You might want to cash in by selling what you find, or maybe you'll want to donate your scientifically important specimens to be studied, or possibly you'll want to build up a world-class private collection. I trust you've watched my first two episodes of this series, especially the previous video that covers the glossary of terms. This video and the others following are full of terms you need to understand or you're about to become really confused. If you haven't watched the first two videos, go back and catch them now. So, what was that in the sky? Fireballs can be created from a number of things. Chunks of asteroids, satellite debris, or icy fragments of comets. Meteors that are tiny and that burn up in less than two seconds will have burned out completely. Stay home, there's nothing out there to find. Satellite debris or space junk can fall back to Earth, but that material usually enters at a very shallow degree of entry and will often burn longer than 10 seconds, sometimes much longer. While some of the man-made junk could survive to the ground, it's best not to get off the couch after such an event either. Now, if a fireball lasts from 3 to 10 seconds or so, this is a great candidate for you to take a closer look, as it is possible that something could have been on the ground waiting for you to pick it up. Sometimes an asteroid or a comet will be very large, but its composition could be so fragile and possibly growing extra fast, so when it does slam into the upper atmosphere, it shatters into tiny pieces that immediately and completely get consumed in the fireball. Some of the biggest and brightest fireballs are so bright, too bright. This usually happens very quickly, usually within the first second or two of the fireball. But sometimes an event starts out promising only to fizzle out in a huge blaze of glory. Most fireballs will have some eyewitnesses. Ask any detective in a crime and they would much rather have video evidence of a crime than eyewitnesses. Why? Because eyewitnesses get it wrong all the time. People will see a fireball and they will swear on their mother's grave that it landed just behind the barn or just over the other hill. They are completely sincere, but sincerely wrong. Because if it landed where they think it did, it would have burned out five to 10 miles up, almost directly above them. You know, at night, standing under a tree, it looks like the moon is caught in the tree branches above you, right? But it isn't. It's way up there. This optical illusion happens to everybody because it is impossible to judge distance in the air. Fireballs are so large and so bright that even a few hundred miles away, people often think it landed just a half a mile away. It's crazy. We are going to talk in a later episode about how to know where you need to look. Just be prepared that it might be further away than you think. The point is that you cannot trust someone's eyewitness account, not even your own. And just one video is very limited on what it can tell us as well. Some of the eyewitnesses will self-report their findings to the American Meteor Society at their website, amsmeteors.org. One eyewitness report alone is very unreliable. If enough people report what they see, and especially if sonic booms are reported by some eyewitnesses, often 
a very good estimate will be established as to where it landed. The programs at amsmeteors.org will combine the submitted data and will come up with a rough idea of where the fireball burned out. And if we know that location precisely, we can better determine where rocks on the ground might be waiting for you. Video footage is far better than eyewitnesses as video doesn't get confused or forget. It can be played back, zoomed in, calibrated, and analyzed. Sometimes video footage is incorporated into the data at the AMS website too. Here at Fireball Headquarters, we love videos. Sometimes they come in from security cam cameras, sometimes from dash cameras on cars, now, if your fireball was lucky enough to have fallen within the range of the brand new all SkyCam network consisting of relatively low cost yet super high quality camera units, then the odds of you finding a meteorite have gone way up. And if you think spotting a baseball or a golf ball shooting through the air from some distance is hard to see, falling little black rocks or even larger black rocks after they slow down and stop burning are almost impossible to view a mile or more away. And by the time they reach the ground, they are falling almost straight downward. So eyewitnesses to actual impacts with the ground usually consist of people being inside when say a rock crashes through the roof of their house or sometimes when one lands right next to them when they're outside and they hear the thud of it striking the ground. The most famous case is back in 1954. Mrs. Hodges was taking a nap in her reclining chair at her home in Sylacauga, Alabama, when a 12-pound cantaloupe-sized meteorite crashed through the roof of the house she was renting, smashing through the roof, the ceiling, bounced off a dresser, and ricocheted, striking her in the hip. She lived, but it left a huge bruise on her, which landed a photo of her in Life magazine. Since she didn't own the house, the courts sided with the house owners, her landlord. So she didn't even get to profit from the selling of the rock to help her with her medical bills. But she has gone down in history as the first person known to have been struck by a meteorite. Fun fact, a second stone was also found from that fall. And while we don't have video of the event, I would bet money there are still more pieces of that meteorite within a mile or so of where those two were found. If you live in Alabama near Selacaga, keep your eyes open. There could be something still laying out in plain sight. Rocks found immediately after the fall are great as such newsworthy events grab the media's attention and we can tell quickly that it is indeed a meteorite producing fireball. And odds are extremely high that there are more pieces from a few feet away up to a dozen miles from that known bullseye spot. Once a rock is positively identified as a meteorite, the rush is on. And of course, if you're a little late to the party and other people have already found meteorites from your same fireball, then you definitely will want to join in on the hunt and look for more pieces. Fragments very close to where the other specimens were found. A fireball event will release a lot of energy and produce a shock wave and a sonic boom that will travel from the endpoint pack in our atmosphere roughly 30 or 40 miles up in the air. This sonic boom will be heard in a 40 mile radius and can be detected by seismographs many more miles away. Doppler radar can sometimes pick up falling meteorites, but it also gets a lot of false signals and it can take a long time to search through that raw data. If we have a site really narrowed down, it can be a great resource to show us precisely where to look.
One of our newest tools in the Meteorite Hunters tool chest is GOES Data. This is a satellite-based system that captures lightning flashes, and it also captures meteors. Due to the angle of the flash and the computer assuming that a flash is at or near ground level, which is where lightning will hit, and not 30 or 40 miles up in the air, which is where fireballs start, the ghost data has to be adjusted, but it can help us. While those of us at Fireball Headquarters can't guarantee we'll be on top of every fireball that drops rocks, we definitely will be in on the big ones and the most promising events. Plug in with us on Facebook and the other places that I'll put links in down below in the description. And be sure to subscribe here on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications of new videos. Bottom line is, the more buzz in an area, the more likely something is waiting to be found. If you saw a meteor, let me know below where you were and what date and time you saw it in the comments below. Then go to American Meteor Society site, linked below, and report more details that are needed to help triangulate where it landed. In our next video, we will share why you will want to join our team and how it will increase the odds of finding something. Please like and subscribe, and remember that anyone can find meteorites, even you.